big. I'm a big sister. Okay, we read our book and then I gotta feed him some more, okay? Okay. Dirty diaper, yuck. Let's see. Here's a free one. Bye bye. Can you just get pushed around like that? Yeah. You wanna try it? Here. You wanna come see my owie? Can you see that? Right there. Why is that there? That's how they got mommy. That's how they got baby out of mommy's tummy. Mommy did. You don't like that? You got a you gentle like no touching. That? They had to cut my belly, right? And then they pulled baby out. And then they reached so you can't be jumping. It. You can't be jumping around. You can't be jumping on. There's me. more babies in there? No, no more well, babies in there. That's what they do. Only one? Something. Yep, just that one. No, I want to grow. You, you want a girl? Anything? Yeah. <laughs> So if you want a girl, give me a goat. Give put, me a girl. Put your baby in here. Put a baby in there. Mommy can't go up and down stairs anymore until she's healed. Uh -huh. So that means at bedtime, you're gonna have to come upstairs and cuddle mommy before you go to bed. Hi. Hi. Take a picture of you. Yeah. Oh my God. Mommy, wait. I'm gonna turn, and then I'm gonna come. Heavy? Ready? Woo! Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is something that is very exciting since it is officially our first day as a family of five exclusively under one roof. The kids have been with both of our parents the last several days since coming home with babies or even just being in the hospital and stuff so they haven't been home in a few days and today is the first time that we're all together and we're all hello it is the first time we're all gonna be getting into good morning it is the first day holiday but i can see them that nice Oh, also nice. Ow, ow, so, so. It's the first day of us getting into a routine. I'm making a holiday. I'm making a party. You're making a party? The kids got home a few hours ago. It is not having a watch. It's about 6 o'clock ish, and we are all about to give our baby boy his first bath my mom brought us dinner which we're so grateful for so we're yes, all able to we're able, like, able to eat that which is nice no. it is going to be yeah. an adjustment i'm yeah. sure of us all getting into the swing of things Dinner. but let's go have a bath are you excited to give him his first bath oh i can't lift you i can't lift you because of my owie but i can give you a big hug let's go go check on your brother we're gonna go give him a bath. I need one diaper. A regular diaper or swim diaper? <laughs> yeah, just a diaper. One diaper. One diaper. Can you find his hairbrush? You look this so small. Here, take this. He's crying. Thank you. Yeah, that one. What does it do? It just tracks his heartbeat and his oxygen levels. Oh, yeah, you are drooling everywhere. Hey, buddy. I will let you do your head, his head, okay? I'm gonna wring it out and I'm gonna give it to you. Gently, gently, there you go. There you go. It's just best buds or what? It's your brother. That's weird. He's not crying anymore. No, he's happy. Because he's got his big brother. Rock-a-bye, baby. Don't want the tree top. When the wind blows, the cradle will drop.
was hoping to book um, a follow-up newborn appointment. Good morning, you guys. Let's Earl Grey and chat, shall we? I hope you're all doing amazing. I'm doing well. I'm on cloud nine. I have three babies. It's crazy. As you saw last night, the kids came home and we all just had an evening together as our first one. It's a family of five. Obviously chaotic to an extent, kind of how it goes when you're merging two different lives i guess like obviously we've only had very few days with the baby alone but still to an extent we developed a routine and then we're now merging that with our previous life and the kids that we already have it's been i think fairly smooth obviously all thanks to mitchell there wasn't much footage from this morning because mitchell got the kids up got them ready and got them to school. I was hoping to help out a little bit and you know get some clips and this and that but the reality is it couldn't. <laughs> I want to keep this video as authentic as possible and really show you guys what the first 24 hours of us being a family five is like. Last night we actually had like a really good night in terms of sleeping baby. He slept really well. We fed him a bunch kind of between nine and almost midnight just kind of that time period he nursed and then Mitchell gave him some bottle and then he nursed again and more bottles and stuff like that so like for that three hours he was just kind of on and off feeding which is good like he's still kind of needing to gain some weight we have had a night where he just kind of is up for a while because he is protesting his bassinet and he's protesting the swaddle he doesn't want to be associated with those things but homeboy those are non-negotiables but last night there was none of that he ate and he went back to sleep it's just I think I kept just getting woken up at the wrong time in my like sleep cycle where I was just in a deep sleep and then jolted awake and I was just having a hard time waking up I was real tired all of last night and just all of this morning and all of all of today but that's okay i am a mom to a five day old so it's truly expected so far he has been just like such a sweet little presence in our lives like he's so chill his little eyes are are just perfect and we're obsessed with him we love him so much the kids are obsessed with him baby is obsessed with stefan like he stares at him so much and stefan's just living it up um sophie obviously as expected was going to be somewhat of an adjustment we didn't really know how and in what way and we still don't and we'll still be figuring it out for a while but we noticed that anytime he cries she gets really upset and not because she thinks he's upset but because he's crying she doesn't want him crying there's a lot of conversation of you're allowed to cry so baby's allowed to cry this is how he talks this is how he communicates he can't say words like you and i so he has to get our attention somehow and hopefully as days go on she kind of clues in and i mean she'll have no choice it was really cute this morning she crawled into bed and wanted to cuddle baby and it was just really sweet we have the best kids i am so blessed and just so lucky and i love them so much this has been a really really good experience so far so we'll see how it goes i know i struggled with some things in postpartum with sophie breastfeeding was hard she had a lot of like weight gain issues she had a tongue tie issue which was huge we had jaundice we had awful mastitis i had some like baby blues and just it was kind of a lot i don't know if that stuff is still in my future but as of right now i'm snotty af but i'm doing well baby boy um has had a 10 percent weight drop from his birth weight um, which he has been from the one way in that we did yesterday um he has been gaining so that's really great. We have a doctor's appointment on Wednesday, so a few days from now. Also, we should be weighing him there as well to make sure that he is gaining. It's not a concern, really, um, because with Sophie, things were in place, such as my milk supply. I had a lot of milk, just like I do this time. Like She was, or so it seemed, latching and all these things, and the issue was she had a tongue tie that was really bad and nobody had caught it we had never or i have never experienced and hadn't experienced Mitchell's never had a newborn experience so that was all new to him but i didn't know about tongue ties at the time i didn't know that they were a thing didn't know that that could be preventing her from getting what she needed in order to grow and gain weight which is honestly fair okay i think that's a fair approach However, we had medical professionals around us for so many days and days and days and nobody even thought to check that that could be an issue. So that was definitely frustrating. And it wasn't until like the second or third visit to a breastfeeding designated clinic 
that they're like, oh, she has a tongue tie. But he doesn't really have one. Like, he has a little one right now, but it doesn't seem like they would do anything about it. I think we are going to get referred to a breastfeeding clinic just to assess that. His latch is like, okay, it's painful. Um, but also, I've seen a couple of nurses and stuff since... Or even just from when he was born to now, like we've seen nurses at the hospital and then we've had a home visit and then we went to do a visit. And there's just so much like advice, not even advice, but almost like you need to do this. So many of them contradict themselves. So I'm doing one thing and then one nurse is like, no, that's not right. And then the, the next one will be like, yes, you need to do that first thing. So it's just like a lot. And at this point I've realized that I need to just smile and nod to avoid conflict but like i need to just focus on myself and my baby this is my third time breastfeeding exclusively so far um i've exclusively breastfed both my other kids so if he was breastfeeding until she was two and a half like obviously we got something down let me be <laughs> you know but otherwise i'm healing decent i think um my incision hurts a lot my uterus will like contract when i feed a lot of the time so like that's additional pain in that like abdomen area which isn't ideal but you know we're working through it i'm taking all kinds of meds uh very minimal harder meds more so just advil and tylenol alternating i'm not taking the full max amount doses i just kind of forget so far so good in that department my boobs are freaking huge like I genuinely look like I got a boob job, like it's insane. No stretch marks yet this time. I don't know if I'll get them. I got them really bad with Stefan just because I had been like an AB cup my whole life and then I went to like a double D in a matter of a few days. So I had stretch marks, but I don't think I had any with Sophie and it doesn't seem like I will this time either. I'm hoping to really stay on top of managing my supply so it doesn't lead to problems. I will link the video below if you're not familiar with that whole story. I believe I have one on my channel where I just kind of explained all of the crap that went on with how it started and how it lasted for forever. I'll show you guys my belly. I think this is the biggest belly I've had. Longest it's been like this out of the three, which is interesting. I don't know why, but anyways. I also am testing out this um, postpartum underwear. I saw Natalie Blue on TikTok use these. She had a C-section a few months back and really likes them. So I thought I'd order some as well. It's definitely like a little, little belly. It's very just like sore and tender. This is the first day I'm trying out these. Leading up to today, I've been wearing the diapers, which are honestly so convenient. Like you throw it on, you don't think about it. And they're also very stretchy. They don't press on your stomach, which I really appreciate. I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to kind of have a little bit more support in that area. So I think this underwear is good, but I don't think I would have liked it day one postpartum, you know? I'll have those linked on my Amazon storefront as well. In case you're about to go through this and are kind of looking for something, they're really comfortable. They feel nice. They don't feel cheap or I think they're cottony for the most part. On top of trying to manage my supply, I'm also trying to make breastfeeding as hassle-free as possible because it felt like with Sophie, it was a production. Anytime it was time to breastfeed, it was like an event. There's so many moving pieces. It was a lot and it was a lot of my mental health as well because I felt like I was a simply a milk production factory and I had nothing more to life than that. And at this point, I'm just not ready for to do that again. The reason I think for that was because I was pumping. So I would nurse her, I would then pump for, I don't know, up to 30 minutes even, not usually not that long, like 10, 15 ish. I would then be putting the milk away. I would be washing pump parts, which are so many of them. They're so annoying to clean. Eat or shower or something, then it's time to do it all over again. That was giving me mental breakdowns. <laughs> this time I'm trying to just like time to feed. He nurses, Mitchell's been changing his diapers. Then he nurses some more and then we move on with our day. And I think that'll be nice for like outings and doing things and having other children that need attention and can't just like sit and watch you nurse and pump and whatever for three hours at a time. I think I've rambled on enough. We're gonna get going with our day. Nothing crazy going on right now. Baby's cousins are coming to meet him today. I'm really excited about that. That'll be really fun. But this morning Mitchell is just getting some shop things done. He's trying to optimize or expand his storage in our office for all his camera equipment. So he's um, at the shop getting a tool chest or something, workbench, I don't know. Also, I fully had a stack of rings that I was wearing in pregnancy because my wedding band and engagement ring and stuff were just too little for my swollen fingers. And then in the hospital, I tried to put it on and they were just like too small. That was humbling. I was so swollen. I still think I'm swollen, but at the time, like day one after C-section, 
so swollen my face so swollen it was crazy we came home from the hospital to a velvet caviar package and i don't know if i've ever been more excited in my entire life i'm obsessed hello look how cute this is like stop i i love it it's got the little magnetic ring which is sick they also sent a pink one and then this case as well and then a wireless battery pack and then another white one and then um the two of these little chains there was another one that was like super cute it was white with pink bows and i think sophie got a hold of it because i don't know where it is i am a diehard stan of a velvet caviar because they sent me a package back over a year ago for sure and I was obsessed with it. I love my phone case and like all the little goodies I sent with it. Perfect. And then this January, I got a new phone and I could no longer use that phone case. It shattered my heart. That was seriously like the worst part of getting a new phone was having to let go of that beautiful case. In that time, I ordered a silicone kind of case. It was a little bit harder than just like silicone, but still flimsy AF I'm off Amazon. And it was clear and <laughs> now it's not got like foundation marks just all the things it's gross and not only that i shattered my phone to shit <laughs> let me tell you like it was horrible literally within a few weeks of having it the case did nothing and i shattered it completely i had to take it into apple and get it fixed and i know that these cases are extremely protective because i my phone would fall all the time with it on and nothing would happen and i'm just like used to that while having that other phone case i dropped my phone a few times and like every time i would crack the screen protector or something so literally over the moon about this so thank you so much velvet caviar i'll have them linked below <laughs> oh also i got got by a facebook i think ad this morning i'm not typically one to fall for those but it's like a slushy cup listen my kids are obsessed with slurpees and of course i want to like give in and give them all the slurpees they ever want but it's trash like the stuff in those are horrible and this thing like you pour juice into and then you like squeeze it and it makes a slushy so i'm curious to see how it works no mess no blenders no nothing i'm i am very intrigued especially for the summer i'll keep you posted <laughs> had swimming lessons that Mitchell took her to and I was just home with the boys. Stefan had homework to do and stuff and baby and I just kind of hung out. I'm starting to feel now. Well, I don't know what it is. Like my boobs are obviously sore and I don't know if I'm starting to get like some really sore spots or not. If it's just like everything's just sore. Postpartum was so hard and I feel like the whole breastfeeding thing is like milk supplies thing specifically. It's such a fine line to walk on. You want your supply to regulate. You don't want to lose it. You don't want to overproduce. It's where my body could feed like triplets and more. Like that's the amount of milk I have. It's insane. We'll see how it goes. But right now I just am not feeling well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are obviously so happy and so blessed to have such an amazing family and kids and everything. It's just been really blissful really mitchell's sister brought us some food and then i was sitting on the couch feeding and i had our like blinds closed so i couldn't see out into our front yard and right around the time i was expecting my sister-in-law to come i hear a, a doorbell and i'm like come in come in and like nobody's coming in i'm like okay like so weird why are they even ringing the doorbell in the first place i go open the door and it's just this delivery man very confused as to why I'm telling him to come into my house. I literally open it in like a nursing bra and baby in my arms. But our best friend Sailing Brandon sent some edible arrangements over. Or sent an edible arrangement over. A beautiful bouquet of fruit that Stefan I think mostly took care of. Um, but it's delicious and so beautiful. Snacks any, any day of the week. I am here for it. So we're just like so grateful for our community and the amazing people in our lives that are taking care of us while we kind of transition into this new chapter. Mitchell's parents are coming by tomorrow and I know they're bringing dinner so it's just really lovely to have all these people that care and are just showering us with love. So anyways, 
Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys soon. Bye.